Yo, what up, y'all? Terry Ward for y'all. I hope you're having a good day so far. If this is your first time here, yo, a big fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, and you came back, welcome back. Yo, it's been like a week since I've uploaded a video. Eight days to be exact, and I am sorry. I need a little creative break, man, but I'm back, back in full effect. Real quick, I gotta say thank y'all for 12 point. 3,000 subs, man. Let's keep the party going. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Still blows my mind that we are at over 12,000 subs now, but let's keep this going. So tonight, what I'm doing is I got a tutorial for you, right? I get a lot of questions like, yo, Terry, your Instagram is lit. Like, how do you get that look? And uh, I did a poll on Twitter the other day asking if people would be interested on seeing like my before and after process of how I edit my Instagram photos. So strangely a lot of people responded so tonight that's what we are gonna do we're gonna go through and edit one of my instagram photos and then you can take pieces and parts and use it however you want to now i gotta say this real quick creativity is totally subjective right you can edit your photos however you want to also there's a lot you can do with photos like with photoshop photo manipulation you know slimming down waistlines removing blemishes i'm not about to get into all of that even though i know how to do it because i just want to show you how to turn around quick instagram photos and Maybe take them from like here to here. Take them from regular to straight banger. The look I create on my photos, I understand you might not like and vice versa. If you don't like it, that's cool. Please leave your negative ass comments to yourself. Oh yeah, real quick, plug. We should be connected on Twitter and Instagram. If we not, you tripping and so am I. So I'm gonna drop them down below. Make sure you go on there, add me. I don't like the term followers or fans, no. Join the squad, let's get connected. Instagram and Twitter are right below. Now, how are we going to edit this photo? Well, we're going to use Adobe Lightroom, which is, in my opinion, one of the best software solutions out there for batch editing photos, and it's very, very easy to use. Now, Lightroom is available on iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac, and it's free. However, if you want to edit raw photos, which we're going to talk about in one second, you will have to pay for the monthly subscription, which gives you Photoshop and Lightroom for like 10 bucks a month. A few things I think you need to do before you get started. If you have a camera, you wanna make sure that you are shooting in raw. The reason we wanna shoot raw is because raw means the camera, I'm not talking about the nasty stuff y'all probably talk about, but raw means that in camera, the camera is saving all of that color data, exposure data, it's saving all of that crap so you can adjust it and play with it afterwards. If you have your camera set to JPEG, the camera is cooking in pre-made adjustments and then when you wanna go adjust that stuff in post, you don't have that same amount of color data to work with. Obviously, we want the most color data possible. If you're shooting on the phone or whatever, see if it has some type of raw mode or shoot as flat as possible, meaning no saturation, no contrast, none of that stuff, if your camera allows. The second thing you wanna do is make sure that your photos are well lit because if they aren't what your camera is going to do if you don't know is hike up the iso and the iso when it's pushed too high depending on your camera means that you get like a lot of static fuzzy noise in the picture which also degrades the image quality without further ado let's get into this ipad i'm about to show you how to take your instagram photos from this to this Let's get it. All right, so I got my photo opened up in Adobe Lightroom. As you see, like, it's already a dope photo, in my opinion, to begin with. One thing you need to make sure of, when you go to take a picture, try to find a picture that looks dope. Because if it's just a picture of you sitting on your couch, it ain't really too much you can do to that without getting into Photoshop or Affinity Photo and actually, like, manipulating the photo. Because you got to remember, Instagram is all about the photo. Instagram is a photo app. It's all about the photo in a dope caption. What happens is you want to take a picture that people are going to be like, oh my God, that's dope. And then with the dope caption underneath, you get them talking. That's how the algorithm gets triggered on Instagram to push your photos out to more people, which means more followers, etc. at the end of the day. So do your homework. Take a little bit more care with the pictures that you're about to take. Try to create something dope and that makes it easier to build upon. But anyways, just looking at the photo to me, it's too dark. And there's a few things I want to change, right? So you can go through this stuff in any order you want to. This is just my preference of how I like to do it. The first thing I want to do is adjust the crop. That is the square emblem on the side with the two arrows around it. Now, once we press that, it comes up aspect. And aspect ratio means what is our crop going to be? So Instagram, if you're on your feed, like looking through all of the pictures, 
is a square but if you never notice when you tap on that square it actually opens up a taller picture so the ideal crop for instagram is actually going to be four by five because lightroom mobile and lightroom for ipad don't have four by five at least if they do i don't know how to uh, i will say that the desktop version of lightroom has more control for instagram i usually go five by four now again you can pick whatever you want you can always pinch and zoom and reframe it on instagram but i find for me five by four is the easiest for me so let's set our crop the second and third things i want to do before i do anything else number one is adjust my white balance now in this photo i think the white balance is cool but if you want to change it you just grab this slider and then you can move that back and forth and all of that does is either make the photo colder or warmer so i'm going to reset this and if you don't know how to reset the sliders just double tap on the title and it'll reset it the second thing after white balance i'm going to do is bring in my clarity now the reason i choose to bring in my clarity first is because if you go through you make all your adjustments and you add clarity at the end which if you don't know what clarity is it's kind of like adding that punch to your photo right well after you make your adjustments and then you add clarity clarity actually messes with the exposure so if you add clarity at the end then you got to go back and then re-mess with your settings again to get the photo to look how you want it to it's kind of working backwards so i'm gonna set my clarity first so let's go to effects clarity and i like my photos to have that punch so i'm gonna crank my clarity all the way to 100 we can always scale it back if we don't like it once my clarity is set, then we can go up here to light and adjust our exposure. So the first thing we need to brighten this up. Let's go ahead and crank this exposure up, right? I know I want my blacks crushed, which is one of the things that my photos always have is my shadows and my blacks are crushed. And what that means is we pull those down. So we're going to pull down our blacks and then pull down our shadows. Now, eh, it's a little dark still, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. Maybe bring up my highlights some. The highlights are the bright areas of the photo. Um, and actually, I'm gonna lift my shadows a little bit. Now, because I want me to stand out in this photo, as you see, I'm kind of dark and the background is kind of light. I'm gonna grab my circular gradient tool by pressing this button right here and the plus sign and grabbing the circle. And all I'm gonna do is draw a circle around myself, reposition it. Now, anything inside this circle, once I make the changes over here, is affected inside the circle. So I'm going to lift my exposure, which is going to brighten me up, right? That's going to brighten me up without brightening the rest of the image. I like that. It's cool. Let's hit done. Now, let's go back to our light tab again. And now we can make more adjustments because now I have me kind of brought out of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of contrast in. All right, now that I'm happy with my general exposure, the next thing I'm going to do is go to our curves, right? So I'm going to hit this right here, and the first thing I'm going to do is just raise my mid-tones, my midpoint just a little bit. I'm going to pull down my shadows some. I'm going to lift up my highlights up here just a little bit. Now, I want to teach you a quick trick. Sometimes you might see those photos where it's got like that that moody look to it like it's kind of flat but it's not flat but it's kind of flat it's got like that cinematic look the way you do that is you grab down here and you're gonna pull this up see what i just did so once you pull this up it gives you like that faded contrast look without taking away your colors but that's not the look i'm going for but i just want to teach you that real quick and this is with our curve adjustment now this is a general curve adjustment you can go in and adjust the reds greens blues but that's just the general curves adjustment and i'm overall happy with that the next thing we're going to do is go to our colors now with a raw file you can go and pull colors out and add colors in very very easily because all of that color data is still intact and again Lightroom for desktop has more control over this, but this is cool for our Instagram stuff right here. So for this photo, I'm not interested in making it more saturated. I'm not interested in increasing the vibrance. So I'm gonna reset both of those. What I am gonna do, however, is bring up our color mix. So a few things off top I'm about to do. I'm about to pull all the blues out because I don't want blue in the photo now if you're filming in daylight there's nine times out of ten chance that you have blue in your photo because there's a blue cast coming from the sky so we're going to remove all teal and blue from the photo so i'm going to hit teal i'm going to pull my saturation down then i'm going to hit blue and i'm going to pull my saturation down that's going to remove blue from the photo now the hue slider will change the color pitch if you wanted to so maybe i wanted to let's let me reset this maybe i wanted to move blues more towards violet see what that does we reset that the luminance tab is going to dictate 
how intense that color is. So I can make it either less intense or more intense, but I just wanna show you how that works. I'm gonna reset this and pull my blues out and pull my teals out. Both of those are gone. Now you gotta be careful with colors, especially depending on your skin tone. So for example, I'm gonna show you. If I were to pull out oranges, African-American people have orange undertone in their skin. So if I were to pull out orange, look how my skin looks mad weird now if you're caucasian caucasian people have a red undertone to their skin so you got to be careful with pulling out reds now are there ways to go around it mask it and stuff like that absolutely but i'm not getting into that i don't want no greens in this photo so i'm gonna pull the greens out and this is our look right now so this is before and this is after just those small changes look how much this photo pops from that so before after i'm pretty pleased with how this looks but i think we could take it just a tad further i'm gonna go back to light i'm gonna bring up my highlights just a tad and pull my shadows down just a tad and what that's gonna do is like give us that hdr type look where the bright parts are bright dark parts are dark you can do this also with dodging and burning if you want to take it further but again we ain't doing all of that the last thing i'm gonna do is grab my gradient tool again and this time we're gonna bring in a gradient from the side of the photo. So I'm gonna drag over the side of the photo, right? And everything in red gets affected by the changes we're about to make. Now, if you need to like go back and edit one of your gradients, there's always little squares on the screen where you made those gradient changes. You can click on the square, go back and edit. But what I wanna do is bring in some color from the right hand side since that's where our light is coming from. So I'm gonna go to light and I'm gonna increase the exposure right then i'm going to go to color and adjust the temperature of this light this quote unquote light that's coming from the right so we're going to push that towards the warm side so now even though it's subtle look how much that changes the picture so we went from this to now this this to now this and that's it like that's all i do to create this look now once you have your look down packed what you can do is if you click up here you can now create a preset so you can name this whatever you want to name it and that way the next time you go to take a photo your base grade is already done obviously if the photo has different color combinations and stuff like that you'll need to tweak this stuff but as a whole this is how you get a consistent look on instagram or whatever platform you're using name it whatever and then you can go through and select what boxes that you want to copy so for me for example i don't want all of my photos cropped in the same way i want to look at them first and maybe there's a part of it i want to crop into then crop the four by five so the crop i would prefer to do on a photo by photo basis but if that's something you want to do then that's what you could do here once you have your preset named we'll name this whatever terry raw okay we'll save that then the next time i want to go and import a photo all i got to do is hit that preset and start working from there so again these are just small things that you can do in Lightroom to really take your photos to the next level. I strongly encourage you, get out there, take some pictures, and if you're serious about Instagram, then you gotta put a little bit more effort into it because that little bit of effort definitely goes a long way. Anyways, I would love to see y'all photo edits, yo. So once you do this and you go and edit your own photo, go on Instagram and tag me, tag Terry Warfield so I can see y'all before and after, man. I would love to see it. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. If y'all want more, let me know. That's all I got for you. I am out. Piece of chicken grease. Have a great night. Peace.